Hey everybody, it's Chris. If you're a sports fan like me, or you're just a fan of a great story, you gotta check out Press Box Access, a sports history podcast hosted by Todd Jones. Todd sits down with fellow sports writers who experienced firsthand some of the biggest sports moments of the past 50 years, and they share some of the stories behind the stories, some of which they've only told to each other. What I personally love are the wild stories that you might not hear so much about on SportsCenter over the years. Like when Indiana-based sports journalist Bob Kravitz recounts the time Bobby Knight showed up naked to an office meeting with him and then banned him from the Hoosiers locker room for the next three years because Bob wrote a story he didn't like. Or when Alexander Wolf tells a story about going out on the town in Chicago with Dennis Rodman and Carmen Electra in the middle of a Bulls playoff series. Or when Dan Wetzel talks about what it was like to be in the media room when Temple basketball coach John Chaney stormed into UMass coach John Calipari's press conference after a game and threatened to kill him. These wild and fun stories, paired with stories about real sports greatness, you know, like the 1970s Steelers being the greatest NFL dynasty ever, or the legendary rivalry between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, and even the impact of protests for social justice issues in sports, make Pressbox Access a show you should check out. Pressbox Access is part of the Evergreen Podcast family, and it's available all the places you get your pods, and you can also find Pressbox Access on YouTube. Go check it out. Hey, are you planning to get an updated COVID-19 vaccine? Yep. I don't want to get seriously sick and miss out on spending time with friends and family. Does it cost a lot? I don't have insurance. If you don't have health insurance or if your insurance doesn't cover an updated COVID-19 vaccine, you can get one for free with the Bridge Access program. Just look for places that participate in Bridge Access on vaccines.gov. Sounds good. Bridge Access on vaccines.gov. A message from CDC. One hit is all you need To make the money guaranteed And you can live off royalties Forever And it makes me wonder Is it just a wonder Or is it one hit thunder Chris, happy uh, post-Super Bowl Monday. (laughs) <laughs> that is today. The Super Bowl was yesterday. Matt, I know you are really excited about the game, right? Uh, you know what? I I am a person who watches things for the communal pop culture aspect of it all. But hey, man, I like seeing historic moments. And like yeah. this was the second ever Super Bowl to go into overtime. First. I think one first one ever. Second. It was the second one. No. Patriots and Atlanta Falcons uh, that, that went game didn't into overtime OT, did a couple it? years ago. Really? Am I wrong about this? Yeah. They even said it on the broadcast, only the oh. second time the Super Bowl's ever gone into overtime. Wow. Okay. I was wrong. <laughs> I guess. Um. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Wow. Okay. I was wrong. I thought the whole time, like, a Super Bowl has never gone to overtime. I guess I was just thinking about, you know, decades of them saying that. I guess I forgot yeah. that that happened. Okay. All right. Well, and also, hey, you're we proving saw... me. You're proving to be the real uh, sports aficionado here, Matt. I'm impressed. <laughs> and also, uh, I think we saw like a record-breaking uh, field goal kick oh, distance-wise. Yeah. So, you know, there were some historic things that happened. And I don't know how I felt. About... You watch more football than me. To me, I thought that this was a very boring game until the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was a really bad game. But then it ended up being an amazing game by the end. Went to yeah. OT and then, you know, the dramatic end to it our our friend and many time guest on one hit thunder johnny was at the game and he has a video from his phone he's like right behind where the game winning touchdown was thrown he has a video of his phone of it that's amazing i um my weird super bowl connection is if you go on the horror movie night website and you go into our store and look at like the t-shirt like the models wearing the t-shirts that we have Uh, Mm -hmm. my friend who took all those uh, photos was the official photographer of the super bowl this year they like flew her out and she ran like a whole team uh for all of the like sidelines photography this year so wow from her humble beginnings taking photos for the horror movie night online store to uh to being in vegas for a week i guess there's one other thing we'll talk about and then we'll dive into the music I obviously do love watching the Super Bowl for the commercials. The commercials has really tanked over the last couple yeah. of years. I am very over commercials telling me to watch a full movie trailer somewhere else. Like that was like half of 
the commercials, but I wanted to see, did you have a particularly favorite commercial? I thought that there was only one truly great one for me. Um, let me start by saying I don't care about the commercials at all. I'd rather yeah. there were no commercials. I know that people that don't watch football all year come to it just for the halftime show and the commercials. I'm not throwing any shade at you, Matt, but I just want to watch the game. I hate the commercials. Most people, I was in kind of a loud environment, so people were really talking over them. I did see them to a certain extent. I will say someone showed me before the game even started what I thought was the one really good Super Bowl commercial. And that, of course, was the Michael Sarah Sarah V commercial. Did you see that? That was a pretty good one. I still think my favorite one was the Paramount Plus one with Creed. What about the Dunkin' Donuts with uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and Tom Brady? Did you see that one? Yeah, that was fine. The other one yeah. that uh, they played a couple times and I posted about it was the Arnold Schwarzenegger one that straight up is just stealing a bit from The Simpsons. Um, oh, the where, way he pronounces what? Yeah, neighbor. His, yeah. Is and I was like, funny? this is... No, and I'm like, this yeah. was funnier in The Simpsons when they're trying to teach like the Arnold Schwarzenegger actor to say up and at him. Up and at him. Up and at them. Up and at him. Up and at them. Up and at him. Up and at them. Better. So I wrote down that there's actually three musical things that we can very briefly talk about. You know, we always get these celebrities singing America the Beautiful, Star Spangled Banner. Some are good, some are bad. I feel like all in all, Post Malone and Reba McIntyre both did f perfectly fine jobs with what they were su supposed to go out there and do. No notes, no complaints. It was what it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was in a loud environment for both of those, yeah. too. Yeah, I, I mean, I like, like they were performing well. Yeah, they did all right. They didn't do anything different. I mean, you know that I love America the Beautiful. No one's ever going to do a better version than Ray Charles. But it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, we get to this halftime show. Usher comes out. I mean, this is basically just like a giant advertisement for his tour that got advertised a whole bunch <laughs> throughout the Super Bowl as well. And I'm curious what your thoughts are, Chris, because full transparency, I'm not like the world's biggest Usher guy. Like there were songs that came on that I'm like, oh, I remember this. But like I, if you asked me to name Usher songs, I'd maybe only have... I don't think I could name five Usher songs with a gun to my head. I mean, I argued a little bit last night that Usher has like five good songs. That's yeah. that's about it. He played most of them. But my favorite Usher song, DJ Got Us Fallen In Love, he didn't play. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, why? That seems like such a perfect song to play here. Now, he did do Confessions Part 2. I know you love that one, right? It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he played You Got It Bad. That's a good one. They did. I, I, I mean, let's let's kind of go in order. He came out to Caught Up. You Don't yep. Have to Call Superstar. They did Love in This Club. That song's all right. I was, that's what my first note was. I was not into this at all until Love in This Club hit. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, this is pretty good. But you know what? I will say this right here. Similar to how we described this football game. Kind yeah. of boring until the last act. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. Uh, then Alicia Keys, she did, they did Ain't Got Alicia You. Keys. I yeah. thought that was pretty good. They did My Boo together. Then her came out. They let her kind of pretend to play guitar for a while. I'm sure she, act she actually rips it up, but I'm pretty sure that that it's, was pre-recorded. It, it's a thing that comes up every single Super Bowl, and I and – I, I feel like it's the non-musical people who get really upset and anyone who's a musician is like, do you realize how hard it is yeah. <laughs> to get a good sound in an arena that big with just like a guitar? Like, yeah. of course you have to have that pre-recorded and pumping through a speaker. Like, there's yeah. no other way to do it. It would be insane. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I wasn't saying that in like a bad way. I'm just no, saying No, no, no. I Because you're she... a musician, so you know. But people will always bitch about that or when the Red Hat Chili Peppers showed up. Like, yeah, when you're in an arena, it's the same with like when you're watching the Macy's Day Parade. They're not going to have a band perform for real on a traveling float running down the streets of New York City. It's going to sound like ass. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, then I will say the highlight was watching Usher and his dancers roller skate dance. Dude, the roller skates were awesome. Like yeah. that was when I was like, okay, I'm starting to get into this. One of my notes 
though, and this Confessions Part 2 is when this really clicked in for me, Usher was ripping through these songs so fast, Mm -hmm. it almost started to feel like a weird alpaca. Like, it felt like I barely had time to even register what song he was singing before he was already, like, moving into the next one. <laughs> like, it it was just so rapid fire. And I, I looked at some of the past, I guess that's how it's been for a couple years now. Like, I think The weekend maybe only did four songs and they really, like, played out those songs. But then, like, Rihanna, I think, had, like, 18 songs that she played during her halftime show. So maybe it yeah. is just like, hey, let's we'll get the verse and a chorus and then like on to the next one. Let's keep moving. Some of them, it wasn't even that much. Some of them, oh, it Confessions was like, was like a chorus in the first line of a verse. <laughs> yeah. Some of them were just the chorus for 20 yeah. seconds. It was a real medley for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to give Usher some more props. First of all, you know, minus the roller skating and dancing in general, the dude can dance. Let's yeah. not beat around the bush there. He is an amazing performer. Uh, the If the performing is at like a nine, I would say the song catalog is at like a five or six probably. He has yeah. some great songs and then a lot of like whatever songs. I want to give him some more credit though. The dude was sweaty as hell, and I love when a performer is sweating it up. I'm a sweaty yeah. guy. I relate to a performer who's going up there and, and giving it their all. A lot of costume changes, <laughs> like a lot yeah. of costume changes in a short period of time. Some of them dumber than others. The the outfits that him and two of his guests were wearing at the end of the show, I was like, those look awful. Those look really bad. But yes, oh, the last one, yeah, yeah, uh, the last one. We got to see how jacked he is at yeah. one point when he ripped his shirt off. Uh, I will say also, oh, here's two questions for you. This is a little bit of an aside, but I was with a bunch of people and one commercial came on. It was Mr. T and everyone's like, wow, Mr. T looks great. And then we were, everyone was trying to guess how old is Mr. T. So in the spirit of props at the Super Bowl, I set the line at 71 and a half. Just off the top of my head, I went back and forth. I'm like, okay, over or under 71 and a half. Matt, what do you think? Mr. T, over or under 71 and a half? So here's the thing. I already know the answer to uh, this because I had a moment where I was like, didn't Mr. T die? And oh, I went on his on. Wikipedia to confirm if he did or not. So he was born in 51, I think. So I'm going to say he's over 71 and a half. I think you're wrong on that because he's 71. So. Oh, he's 71 on the dot. All right. The mi- yeah. <laughs> Never yeah. mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I set that line pretty good. Now, Usher, over or under 46 and a half? <sighs> over, under 46. I want to say that in the 90s, he started to pop off and he was in his late teens, early 20s. I'm going to say he's just over 46, like in his, in his high 40s. Ah, uh, he that's that one's under. He's 45. Really? Um, yeah. Yep. Man, his career popped off when he was younger than I think I realized because he's yeah. got to be close to 30 years of performing. Yeah, I think he's he really when he was like setting records, it was like oh four or so. So yeah. from the time we're recording this about 20 years ago. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he looks great, performs great. He I mean, looks almost the same as he did 20 oh, years yeah. ago to a certain he, extent. He, yeah, for but, sure. Uh, but yeah, so back to the set. Her plays the guitar solo. We get the roller skating. We get into Confessions Part 2. Nice and slow burn. These are just like rapid fire hitting Mm. us. Bad girl. You got it bad. OMG. And then, Chris, I did not know how happy I would be hearing Little John perform Turn Down for What. But it made, like, that moment alone made my night. And then I thought, if this motherfucker doesn't bring out Ludacris, I'm going to be real upset. And then Ludacris comes out there, probably one of the few rap verses that I still have just like locked in my brain. And I thought, you know what? Ludacris should do a halftime show one of these years because Ludacris has got hits for days. (laughs) Um, Here's what I'll say. That song, yeah, I'm just over it. I'm as over that song as could be. That song is the most like generic i walked into a bar that's too loud and there's a dj playing this song (laughs) and i just it goes in one ear and out the other like wallpaper just like baby got back or yeah you know it's it's one of those songs where i'm like oh yeah i mean i 
it's cool I would that say Lil John and Ludacris were there and Will I Am, but I don't know. The song don't do it for me. My I think the thing that's interesting to me with the song, yeah, I've always kind of enjoyed the song, yeah. I think Usher's the least impressive part of the song, yeah. Like I think you take any R and B singer and that song's a hit. Because it's got that like really catchy beat in the background, that doot 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 beat. Mm-hmm. You got Little John doing the yeah scream over it. And then, I mean, the standout part of that song is Ludacris's rap. Ludacris's rap in that is fantastic. Um, I ended up writing down, uh, it ended better than it started. I would say it was a very good but not great halftime show. It's definitely not in the top five, probably in the lower end of the top ten of sure. halftime performances I've watched. Like, is it? I've seen some bad ones, but it's... Yeah. Was it better than uh, Rihanna? No, no. I would put Rihanna above this. I would definitely put the like giant hip hop collective. Oh yeah, halftime above this. Obviously, yeah. Prince is like firmly locked in the number one position. How about uh, Katy Perry? I don't remember Katy Perry's too much beyond Left Shark. So well, I'll say it was below. It's above Katy Perry. I think see, I would say. I would say Katy Perry's was better. You know why? I think when I watched hers, I'm like, damn, she has a lot of good songs. Yeah, that's true. And I true. didn't really I didn't feel think that, that way as sure. much with this. Yeah, um, no, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I Lady Gaga, s- I would put over this. I think Lady Gaga had a killer yeah. halftime show. Now, I'd put this above Lady Gaga because I don't like Lady Gaga's songs that much. <laughs> Hey everyone, let me take a quick minute to tell you about my experience with AG1. I'm sure I'm not the only person who's felt sluggish and stressed and not able to focus. But when I started drinking AG1 daily, I could feel a real noticeable difference in my daily health. That's because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. It's funny, when I first started drinking AG1, I sent a picture of it over to my friend Mike. He's a buddy of mine that's pretty health conscious, so I thought that maybe he'd like it too and I was about to recommend it to him. But you know what his reply was to me? He sent me a photo right back of his AG1. He was already a step ahead of me. And since then, I've talked about it to him several times, and we both agree. AG1 makes us feel more energetic, makes our stress levels feel more manageable, and we feel like we're getting the nutrients our bodies crave. And that's why I'm proud to call AG1 a sponsor of One Hit Thunder. It's the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash one hit. That's drinkag1.com slash one hit. Check it out. Hey, everybody. I got to take a quick minute here to tell you about Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. I was just staying with my friend Jim in Philly a few weeks ago, and I saw some Factor meals in his fridge, and I asked him about them, and he raved about how much he loved them, and so I had to find out for myself. And what I found out is that first and foremost, I love getting pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to my door, but I also love having over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more, and there's even over... 55 nutrition packed add-ons that help make weekly meal planning even more delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel good week of meals ready to go. It only takes two minutes to heat a restaurant quality meal and it's less expensive than takeout while still being dietitian approved, nutritious and delicious. You can't beat that. You can also get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. There's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. The meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. So if you're looking for fast, upscale meal options done easily, head to factormeals.com slash one hit 50 and use the code one hit 50 to get 50% off. That's code one hit fifty at factormeals.com slash one hit fifty to get fifty percent off. (laughs) 
Are you a fan of young adult novels? Have you ever wondered the stories behind the people who wrote your favorite young adult novels? Then join author Eric J. Brown and Alyssa Lube of Netflix's The Circle every other Tuesday on YAOK. Available on all podcasting apps. Woo! So who's it going to be next year? Who's left? Who who can do this? And keep in mind, okay, what's the what's the generic answer that you would say? You would say Taylor Swift, but Taylor Swift doesn't really need to do this. No. Like I so it's the problem is a every single year there's the petition for Weird Al. And you know I love Weird Al. <laughs> I don't want Weird Al doing no halftime it ain't gonna show. Be Weird like, Al ever. It's never going to mm-hmm. happen. It's it's not believable. Um, it leans a lot into pop. If there was ever a chance that they would do another rock band, because they had done rock bands maybe 10 years ago, I'll tell you who I think would put on a killer halftime show is the Foo Fighters. I think they have a yeah. ton of great hits. I think they have a good stage show. I think that it would be something that everybody kind of enjoys because they have like that multi-generational appeal. But I'm also aware it's not going to be the Foo Fighters. <laughs> like, it's- I-, I think that's actually a pretty good guess oh. as to who it would be everybody would like it it would be rocking i mean they had yeah they had cold play do it that was one of the worst ever but like yeah and i like cold play but that is not i don't think that someone posted a thing that i laughed at where they said i don't think r&b is the correct vibe for a super bowl halftime show i don't and like agree with that though <laughs> because dancing is such a big like think about beyonce like she's yeah amazing halftime show i do think that r&b is r&b or you know, more on the dancey side of R&B because you want the big theatrical show. You know, you- I think that they should, in a similar vein to when they did the hip hop throwback, um, give us just like a 90s pop throwback. You know what I mean? Like bring out Boys to Men, bring out like all these 90s groups that have songs for days and similar to how that hip hop one was where it's like each artist comes out and does maybe two songs and then the next dude is out there doing their thing. Mm. Load it up. Or yeah. hire us and we'll just do a one hit thunder. We'll yeah. just be all of our favorite one hit wonders. You yeah. know, Gerardo will come out there. Nine yeah. days will come out yeah. after them. Weedus will close it out with Teenage Dirtbag. <laughs> like, and was, now correct me if I'm wrong, I saw the commercial that nine days were in a commercial for traveling to South Dakota, like South Dakota yep. tourism. D- but I didn't see the commercial air on the Super Bowl, did it? I I wonder if that was one of the regional ones. Oh. Yeah, because you know how like there's the there's like the big one. Listen, I love I love John. I love Nine Days. Uh, I think South Dakota is apparently not that bad of a state, but I don't think that the South Dakota uh, board is willing to pay like a hundred million dollars, quite the way that people that just want you to read the Bible are willing to pay <laughs> oh, oh, hundreds of millions that. of dollars to have a Jesus commercial on the Super Bowl. <laughs> there are a couple of them. I feel like those commercials have been on. The Super Bowl for years and years. I don't think yeah, that's like it's a been new a com- thing. I know. I think it's just a thing that happens every single time. Where like I saw people talking about it, where they're like, "If you're willing to spend a hundred million dollars to just put a commercial on the Super Bowl about Jesus, you didn't read the right book. Like, allocate that shit to like fixing housing for people in bad communities and like famine. Like, there's so many better things. If you have that much money to spend, and you're trying to do like do something religious, maybe like help the less fortunate. Hold on. Now, far be it from me to defend religion. (laughs) (laughs) But I was a kind of impressed that it seemed the message was like, hey, Jesus isn't about hate here. You know what I mean? Like, no, I mean, I'm fine with that, too. I'm just saying you could also get that message by doing good things. (laughs) Well, (laughs) true. But wouldn't the argument that a person from whatever sect of religion that was i mean i guess was it just christianity in general like who yeah, who was who what church was that that was just like jesus or yeah. whatever but it's the conundrum i would say with uh you know to give a slight spoiler alert for a future episode but i mean the documentaries on netflix it's this it's the same as the conundrum of like when a bunch of rich and famous artists record a, a song to raise money for a cause like the intentions are always good, and I appreciate that, but you're also sitting there being like, yeah, but you also have enough money to just send the money to where the problem 
is at the same time. Like it, it's yeah. it's that double edged sword. I think I saw that it's seven million dollars, and okay. that they got two commercials. I think that's the. I think I saw fourteen million thrown around. But wouldn't okay. the argument be from whoever's putting this together? Like, well, yeah, we spent fourteen million, but we're getting this message out that's going to result in ten times that. Doesn't so, somebody had to figure out the math? Yeah, to, I'd love to see how much it's. So past guest John Franklin has a joke on uh, on his stand up special that is perfect for right now, but it's about how the NFL had the end racism stuff uh, behind the goalposts this mm-hmm. year, and he's like, "What racist in Louisiana is watching football and is just like, honey, take the flags down." <laughs> Like, right. like it's like yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a good decision, but I I always question how many people are being who's who's converting to to Christianity and giving a bunch of money to a yeah. good cause because a commercial played on the Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, I, you could probably make that argument about anything. Who's buying? Uh, uh, I saw Eric Andre was in a what what was it the the ice cream bar uh, yeah. commercial? It's like. Are they going to sell seven million dollars more of these ice cream bars because Probably of not. this commercial? But, but the at least with food, I can understand because have you? I know that I this has happened to me a bunch, where you're just like you could be the fullest you've ever been, and you're watching a TV show and they're eating something that looks absolutely delicious, mm. and you're just like, oh man, I kind of yeah. want to order a pizza right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I will tell you that I snacked hard during the Super Bowl. <laughs> I Mar- did it. Oh, I had a wow. bowl of soup. It was just me by myself, so I had a oh. bowl of soup. <laughs> Dude, I I was killing these drinks that are two turnt Tony's drinks, <laughs> <laughs> two turnt Tony like iced teas that were pretty good, and uh and Marquette made a a veggie pizza, which you know was incredible. I probably had yeah. like ten pieces of that. Uh hey. Last thing here, Usher, we both think it was pretty good. Commercials are pretty whack. Um, in general, it was a Super Bowl. It started out slow, ended pretty great. But one thing I do want to talk to you, sports related, Matt, you know you're watching like an insane quarterback in Patrick Mahomes, right? Did you realize that? As oh, a yeah. non-sports fan, you have to realize you're kind of looking at a guy, they're starting to mention his name in the same breath, obviously as Tom Brady, but also Michael Jordan and like, you know, one of the greatest athletes ever. What's crazy about it is I know you don't watch football, Matt, but what you got to know is the guy who watched every, pretty much every game of every team of the NFL season this past season, the Kansas City Chiefs, they're not that good. Honestly, like they had a nice run in the playoffs, but what he singularly did to lead them to a championship is insane because that team was pretty on the mediocre side of good. And they somehow still won the Super Bowl. It was pretty crazy. So, so obviously I saw a bunch of discourse on stuff like this. And I did see someone say along the lines of like, with how young Mahomes still is, like he is almost guaranteed to become in the same vein as like a Tom Brady, where it's just like, this dude is just going to be, that winningest quarterback that like just takes his team to the big game like nine times out of 10 for the entirety of his career, as long as he like protects himself and keeps himself healthy and doesn't, yeah. you know, get like a career ending injury. Like he's going to be like, I, I get it that we're, that we're watching one of the greats, which is why I think it's so funny that there are still people that are like, that game was rigged last night. And I was like, <laughs> I don't dumbest, even... The dumbest argument ever. Because the dumbest, a team that's gone four, won four out of five of the last Super Bowls is a, ri- is a rigged game. Well, like, I just, to me, as someone who doesn't follow sports, who doesn't really know sports, I didn't even see anything where I'm like, oh, that's a bad ref call. Like, there was, it actually seemed like it was a pretty uncontroversial game well, also, <laughs> across the board. Like, also, if you're going to make that argument in that overtime, it was third down and the 49ers had a play where I was like, Oh shit, they got a, they got a punt now, but they called a penalty and gave them a first down. If anything, it was, if you're going to argue that, Oh, it's fixed or whatever. I mean, it, it was fixed in like, the favor of the 49ers. Yeah. If it was, like, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I thought it was a, pretty good game i can't believe we haven't even uh, i guess we talked about her being like a 
halftime perform, but the Taylor Swift stuff, whatever. Like, of yeah. course, they're psyched. She's like the most famous person in the world. Of course, they're going to show her. And also, she's surrounded by famous people. That's she's up true. there. It's like she's there with Ice Spice and Alana Del Rey. Like, of course, you're going to cut to that box. Why? Why are, wouldn't you cut to that box? I want to know how and why are Taylor Swift and Ice Spice such good friends that they're always together now? <laughs> I, I, I only say that because. Ice Spice is just in like the last year or two gotten really huge and now she's friends with her. But doesn't Taylor Swift have some like friends from high school or something? I, probably not, but I no? actually don't think she does. Um, oh. Just because just because knowing, I mean, like she didn't grow up too far from where I'm at. Like, so she used to sing the national anthem in a lot of Phillies games. Like she was in this general area. But from what I understand, like even before she started to blow up, like, she was kind of already doing the like travel life. I don't think she had a normal go to school and make friends oh. relationship. I think that she was, I think she was learning from tutors on the road and like trying to like, cause I think her first album, she was like 16 or 17. Like I think yeah. she was really young when all that popped off. Uh, my guess is that ice spice shows up on her new album somewhere. Okay, well, whatever. I'm just saying, yeah. th not Ice Spice in particular, Lana Del Rey, whoever. It's just yeah. there's always <laughs> there's always like other famous people. And if I was like her longtime friend that just happens to not be a musician, I'd be sitting at home being like, why didn't Taylor take me to the Super Bowl? Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I don't know. Just eh, a thought. Who knows? Who cares? Or maybe maybe there was a row in front of her that was all of her friends from high school, and or, the cameras just never cut to her. Or <laughs> I guess I should think about this more logically. Is that Tickets are insanely expensive for this thing. So maybe those other people bought their own tickets because they can <laughs> afford to bu uh, buy a box seat at the Super Bowl or something. So maybe that's part of it, too. Yeah, and, I think uh, even on the lower end, the tickets were like three to four grand. Like I couldn't yeah. justify. And that's that's just for the to get in the door. Then yeah. factor in like flights, a place to stay for the night. Like it's. Yeah. It's a it's a pricey little trip, but uh, we'll be back with a regular episode of One Hit Thunder later. on. You know what, Chris? I think it's time for a draft. I think on this Wednesday, Ooh. I think it's on this Wednesday. Maybe instead of a regular episode, we'll we'll toss a draft to the listeners. I only got one thing to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is little John here? What happened? <laughs> Do I sound like him? <laughs> <laughs> One hit is all you need To make the money guaranteed And you can live off royalties Forever And it makes me wonder Is it just a wonder Or is it one hit thunder Can I give you 30 bucks to lean into your decision to start working out and eating better? I'm Carl, co-founder of Body. That's B-O-D-I. And right now, if you sign up for a one-year subscription to Body, I'll give you an instant $30 discount. That's 59% off. Look, I know it's not easy to get fit and lose weight, especially if you're trying to figure it out by yourself. But we make it simple. Just follow a program for 20 to 30 minutes day by day and lose 5 to 10 pounds a month. We have over 120 programs that have been tested and proven to work, and almost 300,000 five-star reviews in the App Store to prove it. Body also has complete eating plans and thousands of healthy, delicious recipes. So stop guessing and start seeing results with Body. And let me give you a $30 instant discount right now so you save big on the app that CNN underscored named Best Fitness App. So don't wait. Sign up for a year of Body and get a $30 instant discount to save 59%. Just go to Body.com. That's Body with an I dot com. Hey, what's up? My name's Lurk, and I'm the host of Lamb Goat's Van Flip Podcast. Every week, I have in-depth conversations with bands from all over the scene, big and small. We also like to keep our finger on the pulse and showcase up-and-coming bands on the show as well. So come check out Lamb Goat's Van Flip Podcast.